A Lion locomotive in 5 inch gauge, part 8, a live steam test on the workbench. But first the good news, the new water gauge doesn't leak at all and it's now showing half a glass of water, which means the boiler is half full. Before I start the steam test I want to show you one or two things. This is the underside of the fire grate and it's a bit of a puzzler this. Someone has taken the trouble to fit this small handle or mounting to the top side of the fire grate. How do I know it's the top side of the fire grate? Well, if you look at this image, which is quite a clear shot of the end of it, you will see that the fire bars taper towards the bottom. That's to let the ash fall away. It's not a massive problem. It doesn't make that much difference, but it's definitely the wrong way around. It's not important at the moment. I've removed the ash pan and the fire grate because I'm going to use my small gas burner for the live steam test. I thought I was going to be really smart in this episode. I was going to run the engine using compressed air and then use the axle driven pump to pump water into the boiler. But unfortunately for me, the axle driven pump didn't work on this occasion. And that's why you've just seen me remove one of the safety valves and use a piece of silicone rubber and a small steam fitting with a funnel to fill the boiler. This didn't take very long and in no time at all, in the gauge glass it was showing half a boiler full of water. As I'm firing the engine on gas, I don't need to fill the boiler right to the top, and even if I was firing it on coal, I would still start up with about half a glass of water. In this clip I've just used a small gas blowtorch to light the burner, and I'm trying to push it into position, but it's getting hot. So I'll use a screwdriver instead. It's quite important to make sure it is in the right position, and not cremating the underside of the engine. After about 15 minutes, some steam started to appear, and quite a lot of water from the injectors overflow. This is not a good sign because I haven't opened the water valve to let any water into the injector and I haven't opened the injector steam valve on the turret either. Unfortunately what's happening is the check valve is blowing back and letting first of all water out of the boiler and then steam. At this point I'm really glad that I'm not coal firing the boiler because when I look at the water gauge there isn't much water in there at all and you can't just turn off a coal fire like you can with gas. There's not much pressure in the boiler, about 25 pounds per square inch, but I thought I would try the injector. So first of all, I opened the water valve and then the steam valve, and the injector, to my surprise, immediately picked up and started pumping water into the boiler. What's showing on screen at the moment is something that I knocked together. It's a temporary injector water supply with a valve. And the procedure with injectors is always open the water valve first, and let the water run from the tank, which cools the injector, then open the steam valve, and if you get it right first time you'll be lucky. Then once you start to back off the water valve, the injector will pick up and start to pump water into the boiler, like it's doing here. And there isn't much pressure in the boiler, here's the gauge, 30 pounds per square inch. What a brilliant injector. I'll show you the live steam injector one more time because I'm so pleased that it works. Open the water valve, let the water run, when you open the steam valve, the flow increases, and then as you back off the water, the injector picks up. And look at the speed that the water's going up the glass now. This boiler is a funny shape. It has what's called a haystack firebox, a very old design found on earlier locomotives like this one. The injector is still pumping water into the boiler and the pressure's not dropping much at all, and it's only fired with a little gas burner in the firebox. Time to open the regulator. And as I haven't opened the drain cocks on the steam chest because right in front of them are some pieces of electrical equipment, I'm now getting a shower bath. But this shower bath doesn't last very long, and the steam oil will probably do my hair some good. In this clip the engine is running backwards. This has slip eccentric valve gear. To make it run in the opposite direction you have to stop the engine and rotate the wheels manually in the opposite direction, and then when you open the regulator, off it goes this time in forward gear. The only problem with slip eccentric valve gear is you can't notch it up. Notching up is a way of saving steam, but this boiler is so good I don't think it really matters. I'll stop talking for a while so you can just listen to the engine and watch it run.
as you can see it really does run very well indeed. There is a small amount of play in the crank axle, I've already pointed this out in a previous episode. I'll fix it in a later episode. Once the water clears from the piping the whistle works very well and is still only running on £30 per square inch. And what is more remarkable is the fact that the engine is running and pumping water into the boiler, the gauge glass shows that the boiler is now full and the pressure isn't dropping. And believe me when I say this is definitely not normal. I'll speed up the engine and see if the pressure drops. No, the pressure's still not dropping. I'll blow down the water gauge. Blowing down the water gauge clears any bubbles in the glass so you can get a true reading of how much water's in the boiler. I really am impressed with this engine. What I've actually done here is turned the gas off, so from now on to the end of the video, there is absolutely no heat source underneath the firebox. Yet the engine continues to run in exactly the same way. What sort of witchcraft is this? I think it's time for me to go. I'm going to leave you with the engine running on the bench on steam without any sort of heat source in the firebox. I think it's something to do with the fact there's a lot of copper in this boiler for its small size. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website. 
and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back, making it unnecessary to comment that the videos are too short.